So take a look. This is Japan in the middle of the day. It's closed. Everything is closed. This is insane. Um, you know, these stores here are usually malls that move, I'm sure, millions daily. And it's all completely closed. Um, even like parking lots closed. Um, when a major store like the loft here is closed, you know things are dire. Um, I've never seen anything be locked down, even when we had like a 9.2 earthquake during Fukushima, if you remember that back in, I think that was March 11th, 2011, if I'm correct. Oh, I might have that date totally wrong. Forgive me if I have. Um, I'm just gonna kind of take a walk around um, the, business side of Osaka here in the Tenoji region. Um, this is these days one of the most populous and business oriented sectors of Osaka. And, I mean you can pretty much see all the way down the street that there's barely anybody walking around and this is usually a part of Japan, a part of Osaka that is I mean, bustling, to put it lightly. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised even this place is open. Uh, there must be some really good reason that it is. I'm not sure, though. And uh, the whole area is just incredibly shut down. Um, even places like Pachinko Parlors, which tried to avoid being shut down, um, they were eventually forced to be shut down uh, by the government. What happened was they were kind of being scummy because they were shut down in major populated areas like Tokyo and Osaka and then reopening in like Aichi and uh, Wakayama and places like that which I mean if there was ever a place where you sit next to people very close touch a lot of stuff I mean that's that's a pachinko parlor <laughs> come on is there any reason to be acting like that to be doing that to be keeping those open I don't think they serve any other essential function than uh meeting people's gambling addiction right um you know to each their own if you love pachinko uh, no hate on you but uh, i think during a time of isolation it's one of the main places that definitely needs to be shut down i, I was also kind of surprised um a game center near my place too it was staying open and uh, not being shut down let me just take you around this area too and um that is another place where you pretty much sit right next to people and uh, you touch a lot of stuff. So I'm not sure why that remained open. That was a bit strange to say the least that that was one of the last places to close close to my house. Um, that's a bit unsettling to say the least, but uh, now, now it's everything. Uh, now every little business, everything. I do see the construction workers, as you can see, they're still usually doing their job, but I think they're kind of on such a tight deadline that uh, that probably leads to them having to work around the clock anyway. I mean, when something gets worked on in construction here in Japan, I mean, it gets worked on hardcore and fast. Um, there's no delay. And I guess, I mean, is it really a job where people are very close to each other? I don't think so. It's usually a, a scattered bunch of workers uh, who aren't in close contact with anything that would get them sick I hope I hope they're okay I mean really I'm I'm feeling a lot of empathy for places that are small businesses out here um, I'm kind of worried about a lot of small bars and restaurants I really don't know how they're gonna survive um, I know like I said with my own small business the first three years were hell and I was working in a, a very very high business climate where um, it was eventually easy to grasp onto a lot of business, but it was a struggle just to learn how to even grab onto that. And, uh, you know, the first three years were the hardest to learn. And now, finally, that I'm situated, I have everything paid off and I'm okay. Uh, every small business I think about now that I see open, uh, and I'm sorry if there's a lot of bad wind, there's not much I can do about it during this alley. Usually the people walking down it break it up, but... Um, in this case, there's not a lot of people. Um, you know, I see a lot of small businesses open and close here in the Tenoji area all the time. And that's kind of what I'm really worried about is how are they doing? Like, are they gonna be okay after all this finishes? I mean, you're looking at restaurants, bars, all these that have the 
the doors shut. These are usually open all through the day, uh, even sometimes in the early morning and serving as cafes as a, a lot of people need to grab that hot cup of joe as they wake up. And uh, not even that is allowed to happen. I mean, understandably so in the sense that it's an easy area to be contaminated, but I just, I feel bad, man. I feel bad for these businesses and I feel bad for any of the struggling businesses. And I also worry a lot about the, the poor teachers who might've just come out here as this started. I mean, imagine if you're a, a teacher who came out here just as this uh, started. For example, uh, one person I'm, I'm a little bit worried about, I haven't been in contact with him, but Busan Kevin I know was taking a vacation from China and uh, he got stuck here. He was actually um, on his way here just to, I think, uh, visit with some relatives or friends or whatever he was up to. And his family got stuck here. I saw him posting. And, uh, you know, Kevin, if you're listening, man, my heart goes out to you. I hope you're okay. I hope uh, you're able to keep the family safe and quarantined. Uh, I hope your financial situation's okay. And um, I hope you can get back to whatever job or business or whatever you had going in there. I really don't, I haven't kept up with him in a while because he moved to China, but um, I did see him post recently that he's kind of stuck here. You can see even the parks pretty uh, loosely populated. Usually these parks are filled and we're even in Sakota blossom season. So this is the, the time that people usually head out to the parks. So uh, it's a bit worrying to see. And uh, I hope I hope everybody's okay. Like I said before in my last video, if you are a teacher who I guess recently came here or worked a job that got shut down and you're kind of struggling, um, you're kind of in a bad situation or trying to figure out what to do, hit me up, hit me up in the comments below, even if you need to. If you have me added on Facebook, hit me up in there. Um, Let's see if I can do something for you. Uh, I recently, I had a friend who got knocked out of the whole teaching business. Uh, he, I mean, he, he just pretty much got in a bad situation where they eliminated his job and didn't give him any heads up, no notice, nothing. And uh, I was luckily able to put him in contact with a place working security. So jobs are expanding outside of the realm of teaching here now. It's not like in my old videos where I used to say, if you're coming to Japan, expect to teach. Um, it's not really like that anymore. I mean, uh, especially with the Olympics still coming to Japan, I promise you, um, it's, it's, not, it's not so bad like that. But um, maybe there's a chance we can get you into something else if, if you're out of work right now. Anyway, guys, again, I'm sorry if the wind is real bad here. I'm doing my best to keep it out of the mic. It might be super rough. I'm turning around here and walking down another place so that I can get away from that wind. It's, it's really bad in this alley. But um, yeah, I'd really, I really would love to hear or maybe even just do like a collab video, like a Skype talk. Obviously, we don't want to travel to each other's houses, but Skype with someone who's kind of stuck in a situation where their job's been eliminated. I, I'd love to hear what they're doing, uh, if they're okay, because if they are okay and they're doing all right, um, I'd like to spread the word as to how to deal with this situation. If you yourself are stuck in that, where you are jobless with no way home and uh, no other form of pay coming into you. I know if you're a resident, and this includes just people with Gaikokujin Minkyo with the Gaijin cards, you do um, receive the Juman payment that uh, Shinzo Abe is handing out. So make sure you apply in any which way. Um, lucky for me, uh, my wife's already done that for me. Uh, she's already added me into the loop and gotten that out of the way. But for you yourself, if there's some kind of paperwork you need to fill out still or some kind of identification to show that you're a resident, do it. You are able to get that stipend. Um, I know you're probably not going to be able to get the American one, so please apply for the Japanese one and keep yourself safe and well fed and healthy and I hope everybody who's watching this right now is safe and healthy and doing all right. Like I said, I'm going to continue to update um, my dedication to this channel. Man, it has been rejuvenated uh, before I end this video. I just really want to say like, thank you guys, man. Uh, 
it really moved me when I put up a new video and I saw how much people were accepting of me being away for a year and even going into my kind of dark period where I made those drama type videos and you know I know I've done some goofy stuff in the past I've I've made mistakes um, it's just a really comforting feeling to come back to a community so you know so comforting and open armed and ready to see my videos again after I've been away this long I if someone wanted to come out there and yell at me for not updating and uh, popping out of the the ether just to grab a few views well those of you who know views don't really mean a lot because I don't get paid to do YouTube but to just have people instead say things like oh I'm, I'm just glad you're here and you're back and you're making videos I mean that's that's the inspiration man that's and that is the biggest reward of YouTube. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, I know there's people out there who do it for the money or do it for the fame or the, the clout. For me, from the beginning, it's always been about the communication, the dialogue with my community. And to see that just start right back up again, even if it's only like a hundred of you watching, it feels so good. It feels like so inspirational. And I can't thank you enough for just even giving me a little bit of time to watch my stuff. I'm hoping that in return, this little bit of time that I'm using to make these videos fills your day with something that'll let you meditate or reflect on something outside of the coronavirus. And uh, I will continue to update and uh, let you know just how things are going during this time. Until next time, I'm unrested. I'm gonna go by unrested again. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I'll talk to you later.